In this video, we're going to make a simple power function in C. So remember, the way the power operation works in mathematics is that we have a base to the power of an exponent. And we get the result by multiplying the base with itself exponent number of times. So for example, if we have two to the power of three, then this is going to be two times two times two, which is going to be eight. And we have the base two multiplied with itself exponent number of times, which is three in this case. Now we do have some special cases. So zero to the power of zero is undefined and anything to the power of zero is going to be one. Now we can actually have negative exponents, like for example, five to the power of negative two. This would involve fractions though, and we're not gonna handle that. We're gonna to stick to integers. So we're going to assume that our exponents are going to be non-negative integers, and we're going to assume that we're not gonna call the function with a base of zero and an exponent of zero, and we'll also assume that our base values are also going to be integers. Now in this case of zero to the power of zero, the function is going to return one, which is actually sort of a common default way of handling that situation. So up here, let's define our function. The function is going to return an int value, which is the result of the power operation. We'll call the function power, and the function is going to accept two arguments. So we'll have two parameters here, one of type int for the base, and one of type int for the exponent. Then in our function body, we'll define the result. First, we'll declare an int type variable called result to store the result, and we'll initialize it to one. Then down here, we're going to return the result after we've calculated the result. Now to calculate the result, we're going to use a loop. And what we'll do is multiply the base with itself exponent number of times using this loop. Now we'll gradually build up the result by performing each multiplication operation with each iteration of the loop. And we'll store the result back into the result variable each time we do that. So here we'll have four for a for loop. We'll declare a counter variable of type int called i to zero. We'll continue the loop so long as i is less than the exponent. And we'll increment i by one with each loop iteration. Now, because of the way we've set up this loop, this loop body is going to run exponent number of times. So for example, if the exponent is three and i is initially zero, then we'll have that i being zero is less than three. So this loop body is going to run the first time. Then i would be incremented to one. One is less than three. So the loop body would execute for a second time. Then i would be incremented to two. Two is less than three. So the loop body would be executed for a third time. But then when i is incremented to three, three would no longer be less than three and the loop body would stop executing at that point, and we would return the result. Now, if exponent is zero, this actually also works out. So if the exponent is zero, then that means this loop body is never going to execute because zero is not less than zero. And in that case, this loop body never executes, and we would just return a result of one, which would actually be correct when the exponent is zero. So, what we'll do then in this loop body is actually calculate the result of the power operation. So we'll have here result is equal to result times base. So this will multiply result by base and the result will be stored back into the result variable with this assignment operator here. Now there is a short form version of this. What we could have instead is result times equals base. And this operation here is going to multiply result by base and store the result back into the result variable. Now, if we look at how this is going to work out with, for example, a base of two and an exponent of three, then in the first loop iteration, result is going to be one. We'll multiply result by base, which is two, and we'll store the result, which is going to be two, back into the result variable. And so we'll have two stored into result. Then the loop is going to execute again, and we'll have the result now being two multiplied by two, and we'll store the result, which is four, back into result. Then the loop is going to execute for one more time, and we'll have four times two, and we'll get eight, and that's going to be stored in result, 
which is the correct result of this operation. And we're going to return that result here because that is going to be the last execution of this loop body. And that's it. So let's test this function out now. Down here, we'll call the function. We'll have here, let's say, power called with a base of two and an exponent of three. And what we'll do is output the result of this using printf. So this function is going to return two to the power of three, and we'll use printf here to output that. We'll call printf, and we'll have percent %d backslash n, where percent %d is going to output an int value that we're going to supply as a second argument to the printf function. And backslash n is the new line character, which will output a new line on the terminal. And so we'll pass in the return value of calling this function with two and three to printf here. And we can save this now, and we'll compile the program, and we'll run it. And we do get eight, which is correct. Now, if we did have, say for example, two to the power of zero, that's actually going to work out. So here we'll have two to the power of zero, we'll save it, we'll compile the program, and we'll try it again. And we do get one, which is correct. Because again, this loop body is never going to execute in that case that the exponent is zero. And so we just return one, which is correct. So this is how we can create a simple power function in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.